Hi everyone and welcome to video number 4 in the PBR Painter version 2.0 tutorial series. So this video is super important because I'm going to be talking about the main layer type that you'll be using and that is the multi-channel layer type. So in the previous video we went through how to create masks for your layer, which is super important, but in this video I'm going to be showing you everything you can do with a multi-channel layer and all of the different features, so you'll definitely need this video as a reference if you're new to PBR Painter and you want to know exactly how to make the most of, of the different features. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer and I'm going to leave it as multi-channel as I said and I'm just going to call it multi-channel layer for simplicity. And now that you've kind of seen the previous videos and I'm making the assumption that you have watched the previous videos, I can talk a little bit about this bit here and basically what this is going to do is it's going to change the resolution of the mask that you're painting over here. Um, and this this bit, the this checkbox here is going to change whether or not this is a 16-bit or a 32-bit float. And I'll get into it a little bit later about why that may be important. Um, but for now, just know that you don't actually need this to be super high depending on what you're doing. So if you're kind of hand painting all your little features um, and it's important how the different layer edges blend together, then you kind of want this fairly high. But if you're kind of using textures or you're using procedural textures and you're using masks, it's less important to have this super high because having this low won't actually affect the resolution of your imported textures. It won't affect the resolution of, of things like procedural textures. All it will do is just make the edges between layers um, pixelated. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. But Basically what I'm saying is just play around with this, try and keep it low because unfortunately when you put this high, sort of 4K or 8K or whatever, um, Blender's texture painting system doesn't handle it too well, so you can have a bit of lag. So that's why I kind of recommend having it low and then seeing how it goes and then you can kind of modify it if you need to. So I'm just going to leave it as it is for now um, and I'm going to add a new layer and I'm going to close off these panels. and. Now I'm just going to walk you through kind of what you can do with a, a multi-channel layer. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the primary PBR channels because we've already gone through this panel here and I'm going to talk a bit about what this is. So this is everything you've been familiar with for PBR materials and they're all the channels that are kind of you mostly see when you're when you're working with PBR materials. So you've got everything in here, you've got metallic, you've also got specular so depending on the kind of workflow you're using you can use either of those. Um, and you can kind of opt to turn these on or off depending on which ones you want to be painting in the current layer. So before I go any further, I want to just explain something in terms of how the layers work for each channel. And that is that if you don't turn on a particular channel for a layer, what it's going to do is it's just going to use whatever is underneath the area that you painted. So for example, if I set my background color to something like that, and I set my background roughness to zero. If in this current layer, if I just paint albedo, so I'm not painting on any roughness information, if I just paint albedo, what you'll find is that it keeps that zero roughness. I've done it this way because I think it's the most efficient way to do it for the workflow, um, because otherwise you'd have to kind of be ticking on roughness every time you wanted to specify the roughness, rather than just leaving it as whatever's underneath. Um, and also because of that, it's, it's important if you have something that you know is going to be constant across your whole thing, across your whole mesh. So for example, if you know for some reason you, you only want to use a value of zero for roughness, then you want to do that in the background and then just leave it off for all the layers. And that's going to be the most efficient approach to doing that. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk about now within each channel, exactly the kind of things you can do because when you once you turn a channel on you have to kind of specify the type of painting you want to do for that channel independently of all the other channels. So what do I mean by that? So the first checkbox you have here is going to let you pick the type that you're going to that you're going to use for that channel. So right now I'm in albedo and I can pick a bunch of different options here and I'm going to go through these one by one. The first one painted is only there for albedo and what it what it is is it's basically going to let you paint whatever color is on your brush it will just paint that directly onto the material and it's in other words it's basically going to look like the mask that you're painting over here the other option and this is something that's default for everything else pretty much is you can use a constant value and what that's going to do is it means you can just change the value across the whole layer and this is going to keep it uniform and it's basically going to mean that you can use it 
um, a constant value that you can adjust as you need. Before I go any further, the other thing you'll notice is there's this opacity slider, and basically, as the name suggests, lets you control for that specific channel how opaque you want that um, channel to be. So you can go all the way between zero, which is just nothing, and one is just completely covering the underlying stuff. Okay, so the next one is a texture. So in this case, when you select texture, it'll go black um, because there's nothing imported. Um, but when you do import a texture, and I might actually do that to demonstrate this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click import. And I've got a few examples here. So I'm gonna use this wood example. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna import a the color because I'm dealing with the albedo. And as you can see, it's just imported that as a texture. And you can do that with all the different channels. So for example, you can import the roughness map. So again, just going to texture. So I'm just gonna click the import button here and I'll just find the roughness and import that. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm just gonna do the normal texture as well. And I'm just gonna import that normal there. So this is what you this is kind of the workflow you're using if you want to paint a pre-made uh, material like this over the top. Um, and as you can see, it's just captured that set of textures and it's just painting them on simultaneously wherever you want them. Um, while I'm doing while I'm working with textures now, um, I'm just going to paint over a seam just to make what I'm going to do next clearer. Um, Probably a good point to talk about the panel down here, which has now appeared because I've used textures, um, and that is the texture mapping. And that's gonna let you basically control the mapping of the textures as the name suggests. So you can change the scale, the location, the rotation, whatever you need. Um, you can also change the mapping type. So right now it's on UV, but you can change it to box. And that's really important to use if you kind of want to blur seams. This seam blend is just you're probably familiar with it if you've dealt with textures before, but basically it's just blending the seams um, in your mesh, uh, in your material. Um, so I'm gonna leave that there. So that's how you use imported textures. And one thing I wanna add as well, in, in version 2.1, I'm hoping to put in a new feature which is basically gonna be a, an automatic import of textures. So rather than going through each channel independently and adding a texture, I want to have it so that you can kind of select all of the textures that you want to use, click import, and it will just automatically assign them to all the different channels um, based on the name of the textures. So that should be out for version 2.1, but right now you've got to go through this process of just importing one at a time. Um, okay, so I'm going to switch these back now, now that I've shown you how to import a texture. And I'm going to turn this back to constant, and I'm going to turn them off. And I'm going to go back to just using albedo for a second. So the next one you'll see is procedural. <clears throat> and again, I'm going to assume you watched the previous video on the masks because in that video, I went through this procedural interface here. So if you haven't, I definitely recommend watching that because I'm not going to go through this in, in much depth other than to say that you can pick a procedural texture to use for your individual channel. So for example, now I've got um, a noise set up. Um, I might actually, this roughness is kind of annoying, so I'm gonna put this at 0.5 just to make it a bit easy to see what's going on. Um, and yeah, so you can set up a procedural texture for the, for the channel, and then you can modify that with the color ramp if you want. So right now I'm in albedo, so I might wanna pick a particular combination of colors to show. So whatever I wanna do, something like that. Um, and then you can kind of mod play around with this to kind of get whatever effect you want to get for that channel. And as I said, you can do this for every channel. So you can do it in metallic, roughness, normal, whatever you want to use. So this is really cool for generating procedural textures and procedural materials, obviously. Um, and again, you can change the mapping, whatever you need to do. But as I said, I went through this in detail in the mask video. So watch that if you haven't yet. All right, next one I'm gonna show you is the final one, and this is Link to Mask. And what's gonna happen when I click that is it's gonna tell me that I need to add masks to the layer. And that's because I don't have any masks. So essentially what this option does is it links to whatever the output is of your masks. 
and then it lets you fine tune that output with a channel specific color ramp. So that probably doesn't make any sense at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate it. So I'll just add a simple procedural mask and I'm just going to preview that. And I'm going to try and make it obvious so it's kind of, you can see the boundaries clearly. And I'll turn that off. And then now I can play around with this color ramp in the albedo channel. So as I said, it's the output of the masks plus this color ramp that gives you the final channel value. So for example, if I change this to something like that, it will basically apply this color to the outside bit of the mask and it will apply this color to the inside. So I might make it a bit, of, it's really hard to see. I'll do something like that. Um, actually, it's hard to see because I've got this very similar to the background. So for example, now I've got this black color or maybe I could do white. Um, and then it's just applying that as, as per whatever's happening in your mask stack. So because it's linked, if I change the masks in whatever way I want, it will just automatically change the, the channel that's linked. So really useful if you want to kind of link up multiple channels to a single procedural mask or to a single combination of masks, whatever you've got in here. Um, and you'll get, a, it's a really powerful workflow if you're wanting to create procedural textures because, so for example, I can add normals to this as well. So I can turn on normals and I can click link to mask. And now that that's loaded, I can, you can see it's, it's generating a, <clears throat> a normal map based on the, the colors of that mask. And again, I can c control the color ramp to kind of affect how that normal map sits using that mask as a template. So super cool, um, as I said, for creating procedural textures um, because you can add that to any number of channels and get really interesting results based on whatever's in your mask stack. All right, so they're the main options for the different um, channels here. I'm gonna turn this one off, I think. And I'll just turn that off for now. So now I've got nothing selected, which is why you can't see anything. Um, the next panel is the other PBR channels and basically what that is is if I have a look at the principal shader It's everything else that's inputting to the shader so you can control these independently for each layer So you can use constant values you can use textures you can use procedurals in most cases when it's when it actually makes sense Some cases it doesn't actually make sense um, and you can add those to all these channels independently so for example if I <clears throat> If I select the emission, I can turn on emission and I can either just turn that on and use a constant value. So remembering I've got a mask applied, which is why it's looking like that. Um, and I can choose my emission values or I can choose to, um, link it to the mask again. So I'm doing the exact same thing that I did before, but now it's linked to the mask. So that's really cool because that's kind of really high levels of control over all of these different channels um, for, to create some really cool effects. Um, I'll turn that off again. You can do the same thing with the alpha, so you can actually make the material. Obviously, if you're using cycles, so if I do a value of zero and I switch across to cycles, so change that to GPU, um, you can see that it's actually created that as like a see-through material. So it's more obvious, I might, um, I might just fill the material and I'm just going to go through and I'm going to make this mask a bit more obvious so you can kind of see it. So as you can see, it's actually created that, um, that alpha map from the, the mask. And again, you can link it to mask, you can do whatever you want. So basically the point of this is you can add either a constant, a texture, a procedural or a link to mask for all of the different channels independently in your principal shader. So the possibilities of doing that are essentially endless. And as you'll find, it's extremely powerful for creating really complicated and interesting PBR materials, um, either from scratch or from using imported textures or whatever you want, or some combination of the two. Um, what else do I want to show you? So they're the main things. What I want to do is I just wanted to show you one more thing. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to turn on, I think the normals again, I'm going to go link to mask. 
And I just want to show you one more thing, and that's this Combine Normals button. So basically what it does is it combines the normals of the current layer with whatever's underneath. So this won't make sense until I actually add another layer, which I'm going to do in a second. But just to kind of make it clearer, I might actually make a give this a bit of a colour. Actually, I don't know if that's going to make it easier or harder to tell what's going on. I might, I might leave that off. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another layer. And in this case, I'm just going to use normals. And I'm going to select procedural this time. And I'm just going to show you if I click combine normals. Actually, I won't click it yet. I'll paint on it first. So, um, so I'm just going to paint. Uh, actually, I went the wrong way with the scale. I want to do something like that. So what you can see is I'm just painting on this really like fine bumps from this current one, and I'm going to actually drop the strength a bit so it's a bit less obvious. So yeah, you can control the strength by the way of each individual layer separately of the normal, so that's really cool. Um, and that, but as you can see, it's just kind of overriding that underlying material. Sorry, the underlying normals. But if you click the button here and you go combine normals, what's going to happen, as you can see, is it's actually combining the little tiny bumps that I'm painting now with everything that's underneath. So this is super important because you'll pretty much be using this all the time when you're trying to create these layered materials because Anytime you kind of want to add multiple layers of different normals, so whether that be procedural normals or textures or something else, um, you want to be able to add it so that they kind of combine in, a, in, a, in an accurate way. And I actually have another video that explains the method that I use for doing this. Um, and basically it's, it's a mathematically derived method that is super accurate and it's going to give you really realistic um, and accurate results in terms of how the normal maps are combined. So definitely take note of this feature because as I said, it's something you'll be using all the time um, as you're stacking up different, different materials as layers. All right, so I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about for this. So the next video in the series is going to be going over very quickly the single channel layer. So that's the other, one of the other options in here. Um, but that's not going to be anywhere near as long as this video because as I said, this video is going to cover most of what you'll be doing. Um, again, if you have any questions or if you feel like there's something that wasn't covered, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, check out the documentation, so I'm going to put links to that in all over these videos. You can definitely check out the written documentation because that's going to be a really good alternative to the videos um, to have kind of open in the background while you're working. Anyway, so I think that's it for this video and once again, thanks for watching and as always, I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.